Here are the top stories for today, July 1, 2022. No more secrets. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. underscores the importance of a transparency in the country's health care system as he vowed to look after the welfare of nurses and a better COVID-19 response. New heads of agencies assume their posts, ensuring continuity of governance services delivery and fulfilling the new administration's vision of a better life for Filipinos. The 2 pesos minimum fare hike and public utility jeepneys takes effect today. We talk to drivers and passengers and hear what they have to say on this development. And a breather welcomes consumers in July as firms cut cooking gas prices amid rising living costs due to unabated fuel price hikes. We start with President Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s vow to help the country recover from the impacts of COVID-19. He says the Philippines will no longer be caught off guard by the next pandemic, assuring that Filipino medical frontliners, whom he describes as the best in the world, will be taken care of. In his inaugural speech, Marcos said he's confident that his administration will fix lapses in the COVID-19 pandemic response. He also ensured that the government will advance transparency in the healthcare system. Besides this, Marcos said his administration will see to it that nurses will experience change under his term. Our nurses are the best in the world. They acquitted themselves with the highest distinction abroad, having suffered even the highest casualties. There will be changes. I am confident because I have an OPLE in my cabinet. There were shortcomings in the COVID response. We will fix them out in the open. No more secrets in public health. Metro Manila is leading the list of regions with the highest number of new cases according to the Okta Research Group. Okta Research Fellow Guido David said that based on data from the Department of Health, as of June 30, the NCR had 672 new cases of COVID-19. Cavite is at second place with 85 cases, followed by Iloilo with 70. Aklan, Isabela, Misamis Oriental, Negros Occidental, and Tarlac are tied at the bottom with 9 new cases each. Meanwhile, Cavite had highest positivity rate with 13.2% on June 29 from 5.9% on June 25. This means 13.2% of those tested for COVID-19 are confirmed positive. First placer Metro Manila garnered a positivity rate of 7.5% on June 29 from 6% on June 25. Rizal Province, which had 11.9% positivity on June 25, dropped to 97 on June 29. Other local government units are on the lookout for a possible spike in COVID-19 cases. This as they continue to reiterate the need for vaccination, self-protection, and following health protocols. Here's our report. Agusan del Sur Governor Santiago Cane Jr. on Thursday placed the province under Alert Level 1 as transmissions of COVID-19 in the province declined. Cane issued an executive order after the recommendation from the Interagency Task Force to place the province under Alert Level 1 from Alert Level 2. The Provincial Health Office reported that as of June 28, Agusan del Sur only has seven remaining active COVID-19 cases. In Baguio City, the local government reminded the public anew to continue observing health protocols as the number of active cases in the city recorded more than a fourfold increase in the past two weeks. According to the city's COVID-19 tracker, the number of active cases as of Wednesday, June 29, was 68. Last June 14, the city's active COVID-19 cases were only 12. The tracker also showed that the city was doing over 300 PCR tests and over 50 rapid antigen tests every day. The city public information office reminded everyone to observe self-protection and avail of vaccines against COVID-19. Meanwhile, the Davao COVID-19 Task Force has reminded Dabawenos a new to strictly observe the proper wearing of face masks after the virus positivity rate in the city slightly rose to 4.5%. The task force said there is a need to observe the minimum health protocol as 18 people turned out positive for the virus out of 396 persons tested. 
Since March 2020, the city tallied a total of 72,621 COVID-19 cases with 70,540 recoveries and 2,000 deaths. The city has been under level 1 as COVID-19 cases remain low since March this year. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm J.M. Kalyao. Some departments of the executive branch welcomed their new heads a day after President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. started his term. These officials serve as the president's alter ego and are expected to advance his development agenda in their respective agencies. Retired military chief Jose Faustino Jr. assumed as officer in charge of the Department of National Defense earlier today, replacing Delphine Lorenzana. He vowed to continue efforts led by Lorenzana aimed at defending the country's territorial sovereignty, as well as pursuing modernization efforts for the armed forces. He also thanked Lorenzana for his leadership that made the DND more responsive to various pressing challenges faced by the country. Faustino attended the rites virtually while under isolation after contracting COVID-19. Secretary Cristina Garcia Frasco officially took over as tourism chief on Thursday in mass outtaking rides at the palace. She replaced Bernadette Romulo Puyat, who was named by Marcos as a deputy governor of the central bank. Frasco, the daughter of Cebu Governor Gwen Garcia, is expected to pursue Marcos' vision of sustainable tourism in the country and shared tourism governance by the government and the public sector. The former Liloan Cebu mayor earlier vowed to listen to the concerns of local government units in crafting tourism policies. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has picked a new head of the Department of Foreign Affairs in the person of Enrique Manalo. The career diplomat replaces Teodoro Lopsin Jr. who was named to the post by former President Rodrigo Duterte in 2018. Manalo already served as acting DFA in 2017 after the Commission on Appointments rejected the appointments of then-Secretary Perfecto Yasai. He also served as the country's permanent representative to the United Nations. Shortly after being sworn in as chief executive on Thursday, Marcos also led the oath-taking rights of appointees to his cabinet, which he described as his first official act. At least 24 appointees to agencies under the executive branch and other cabinet-level posts were sworn in. The president will temporarily take over as concurrent secretary of agriculture. President Bongbong Marcos met with various foreign leaders and envoys as part of his first duties. Marcos said his administration is focused on keeping the Philippines' good relationship with countries it considers allies and partners. More on this from Will Basilonia. President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. renewed his commitment to further bolster the Philippines' relations with its allied countries. Marcos made a vow when he hosted a traditional van de Nur with diplomats at the National Museum of the Philippines where his inauguration as the country's 17th president also took place. Marcos said the world's recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic will be more balanced and stable through continued cooperation among countries. He also emphasized the need to address climate change. I still believe that the transformation of the world economy and our recovery from the pandemic will be dependent on our partners and our allies. And it will be those partnerships that will strengthen that recovery, that will make a more balanced and stable new global environment for us to work in. Australia's Governor General David Hurley was the first foreign head of state that President Marcos Jr. met at the Malacanang Palace. The Governor-General is also the highest-level dignitary to attend Marcos' inauguration. The heads of state discuss their expanding cooperation in defense, development, trade, and people-to-people -people links. The Australian Embassy in Manila said the leaders also reiterated the two countries' commitment to peace, security, and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region. Marcos also sought to bring the Philippines' bilateral ties with China to a higher level. Marcos made a commitment during his meeting with Chinese Vice President Wang Qishan at the National Museum of Fine Arts. On the issue of South China Sea disputes between the two countries, Wang stressed the need to properly resolve differences and jointly safeguard peace and tranquility in the contested waters. 
In a separate statement, Chinese President Xi Jinping sent a congratulatory letter to Marcos vowing to continue the good relations with the Philippines. Apart from Wang, Thai Deputy Prime Minister Don Pramudwinay, Japanese Foreign Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi, Australian Governor General David Hurley, and United States Second Gentleman Douglas Craig Emhoff also paid a visit to Marcos at the National Museum of Fine Arts. We can only go from here to strength and to strength and to strength. And for that, I, uh, uh, I, that is what I look forward to, that uh, the day will come when we can say that we have built upon the strong foundation that we came upon. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Wilnard Barcelona. Still ahead, passengers of jeepneys would have to shell out an additional two pesos as the fare hike in these vehicles starts today. And the central bank forecasts inflation to be between 5.7 to 6.5 percent due to skyrocketing oil prices. We'll be back after a quick break. Keep it here on the PNA Newsroom. Follow me, John Espo, para sa kampanyang Disiplina Muna na pinangungunahan ng DILG. Bakit ba kailangan magparehistro sa pagpababakuna laban sa COVID-19? Mahal ka magparehistro dahil ito ang unang step sa pagpababakuna laban sa COVID-19. May tatlong pamamaraan upang makapagrehistro ang isang Pilipino na nais mabakunahan. Una, ang online registration sa inyong local government unit o LGU. Pangalawa, ang pagpunta sa mga vaccination centers at pagkuha ng registration form. At pakikipag-ugnayan sa mga pinuno ng barangay o sa mga barangay health center. Tandaan, online, sa mga vaccination site o sa mga barangay health centers ang pagpaparehistro sa pagpapabakuna kontra COVID-19. Muli ako po si Paolo Medjones, disiplina muna ambasador na nagpapaalala, huwag matakot magpabakuna. Bida ang may disiplina. Magparehistro at magpabakuna para ligtas ang pamilya, ligtas ang bayan. Disiplinadong Pilipino ay rehistrado para maging bakunado. Commuters ought to tighten their belt even more as another fare hike takes effect today. Despite this, some jeepney drivers expressed an 11 peso minimum base fare is still not enough. Stephanie Civiliano reports. Just after the historic day in the country, commuters face yet another fare hike for the first day of July. 71-year-old commuter Imelda Metalang said she surprised her short ride costs her 10 pesos even with a senior citizen discount in Quezon City. Okay lang naman po na matulungan sila, kaya lang parang mataas. Mataas na yung 11 pesos na pamasahe. Dapat sampo lang. And with the rising fuel prices, some parents admitted they are maintaining a strategy to keep their budget. <laughs> The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board earlier approved the 2 pesos increase for public utility jeepneys, hitting 11 pesos as base fare and 13 pesos for modern jeepneys for the first 4 kilometers. Despite the hike, over two decades long, jeepney driver Marty Magpuso said the hike will barely help them secure enough profit due to oil price hikes. Taas talaga ng krodo eh, 90 na eh. Di ba, may 90 may git. Kasi pag 15 pesos na, kahit pa paano, may income na yon. Meanwhile, the Metro Rail Transit 3's free rides officially ended yesterday after its three-month-long program causing riders to maximize the free rides of EDSA Busway. Like Metro Young job seekers Gerald and Dan, who took the bus to save around 40 to 50 pesos for their job hunting. Nakatulong yung kasi ma'am, eh. libre pa masahe kasi minsan kapasahan eh, sa budget. Sana po libre, ilibre ulit po yung pamasahe kasi po, katulad pong bagong nag-a-apply po, mahirapan po eh. 
Transport authorities earlier assured they will provide fuel subsidies for the transport sector to somehow alleviate the effects of fuel price hikes. With this, the new administration now faces its rippled effects, especially that the Ukraine and Russia conflict is not yet ceasing. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Stephanie Savellano. Filipino households get a sigh of relief from the cut in liquefied petroleum gas or LPG effective today. Petron slashed LPG prices by 40 centavos per kilogram. Sulane also lowered cooking gas prices by 36 centavos per kilogram effective 6 a.m. today. Data from the Department of Energy as of June showed an 11 kilogram LPG cylinder may be purchased at a retail price range of 879 pesos to 1,000. 107 pesos. Starting a business is now made easy as the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Anti-Red Tape Authority partnered to relaunch the Philippine Business Hub, which is formerly known as the Central Business Portal. The online platform aims to further ease doing business in the country by reducing steps and periods of starting a business to one step and seven days. PCCI President George Barcelon hopes the Marcos administration would sustain the business policies and reforms of ARTA, which simplify the transactions with public offices, curb red tape, and ensure business confidence to help gain local and foreign investors' trust. The group also fetted ARTA for being one of the most performing agencies of the Duterte administration, successfully addressing the overregulation in many sectors. In 2018, former President Rodrigo Duterte signed Republic Act 11032 or the ease of doing business law. The Banco Central ng Pilipinas expects June's inflation to be between 5.7 to 6.5 percent due to the consistent oil price hikes. It says increased prices of major food products and peso depreciation are the factors of domestic inflation this month. But it was offset by the cheaper cost of fish and liquefied petroleum gas or LPG. DBSP adds it would look closely at the emerging pricing developments in line with a mandate of ensuring price and financial stability to enable prompt intervention to stop the growth of additional second-round consequences. Last month's expected inflation rate is higher than May's figure of 5.4%. The domestic inflation in the year's first five months had an average of 4.1%. Self-employed members of the social security system aged 60 to 64 are now required to file their retirement claims online. SSS President and CEO Michael Regino said the effectivity of the expansion of mandatory online filing for retirement benefits starts today. Members may access this via the my.sss account. Forms and required attachments may be seen in the benefits section of the e-services tab. Then click on the apply for retirement benefit option. Earlier, the mandatory filing of retirement benefits claims were implemented for employed and voluntary members, land-based overseas Filipino workers, and self-employed aged 65 and above. More stories from the newsroom. You are what you eat. Filipinos are reminded to eat healthy as the nation marks Nutrition Month. And a magnitude 6 quake jolts Cagayan. Details ahead. Stay with the PNA Newsroom. Tandaan ang tamang paraan ng paghuhugas at paglilinis ng kamay upang makaiwas sa iba't ibang karamdaman. Basain ng tubig ang mga kamay at sabunin. 
unang sabunin ang mga palad at ang likod ng mga kamay. Kuskusin na maigi ang pagitan ng mga daliri at maging ang mga kuko. Isunod ang pagitan ng mga hinlalaki at kuskusin ng paigot ang mga dulo ng mga daliri sa magkabilang palad. Banlawang mabuti ang mga kamay sa malinis na tubig at patuyuin ang mga kamay gamit ang single-use towel o air dryer. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. As the country continues to cope with the worldwide effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, the National Nutrition Council reminds everyone to eat healthy and follow good nutrition with the launch of National Nutrition Month this July. This year's Nutrition Month theme is New Normal na Nutrition, Sama-samang gawa ng solusyon. In a statement, the NNC said the pandemic disrupted the delivery of nutritional services, increased hunger incidence, and disrupted dieting and food production. It said this year's Nutrition Month campaign aims to highlight the importance of nutrition, improve nutrition interventions, and encourage various sectors to promote nutrition. The observance will also call upon advocates and decision makers to ensure that healthy eating is part of the development agenda in the new administration. The National Task Force and Local Communist Armed Conflict reminded the National Union of Journalists of the Philippines of the mission of journalism to seek and report the truth without biases. This came as the NUJP accused the government on Wednesday of harassment restricting press freedom and silencing journalism. NTF LCAC spokesperson Flossimar Chris Gonzalez said journalism must remain in the service of the truth and not bow down to vested interests. He said the SEC has valid legal grounds to shut down Rappler. He added that the National Telecommunications Commission is justified to order the blocking of Bulatlat and Pinoy Weekly. And the regulation of block timers is a reasonable exercise of regulatory powers. He said freedom of expression and press freedom are very much alive in the country since the NUJP can criticize freely the actions of the government. A magnitude 6 earthquake struck off the province of Cagayan early this morning. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology said a tectonic quake occurred at 2.40 a.m. The epicenter was located 27 kilometers east of the Lupiri Island with a depth of 27 kilometers. The quake was felt at intensity 5 in parts of Apari and Calayan in Cagayan and Flora, Apayao, intensity 4 at Peña Blanca and Tugigaraw City. Cagayan and Intensity 3 in Vigan City and Sinait, Ilocosur. To address Marawi City's garbage issue amid its rehabilitation task force, Bangun Marawi and the Marawi LGU inaugurated a new sanitary landfill that will cater to the needs of the city. Claire Gighe has a story. Marawi City is now served with the opportunity to finally conclude its long-time issue on solid waste management. This is the task force Bangun Marawi or TFBM and the Department of Environment and Natural Resources or DNR together with the Marawi City Government and the Lano del Sur Provincial Government inaugurated the new engineered sanitary landfill completed through the Subcommittee on Land Resource Management to cater to waste of the city and nearby municipalities for 20 to 25 years. We are very thankful na because of the establishment of this engineered sanitary landfill through the uh, of course, uh, as part of the uh, rehabilitation of Marawi City, we are very confident na mas uh, ma-manage natin ng maayos ang ating uh, solid waste sa uh, Marawi City. He stressed uh, that ever since, they have had lack of facility that would efficiently collect and manage solid waste and the problem on the open dump site that caused a serious health and sanitary threat alongside the negative environmental impact to the physical features of the city. Lano del Sur Provincial Governor Maminta Lalondo Adion Jr. then affirmed such as he shared that the waste in the city doubled with almost all municipalities in the province having no suitable place to dump. But with the facility, waste of even neighboring localities can already be accommodated. Adyong further stated that the project fits their aim for the betterment of Lano del Sur and Marawi City, including the need to combat for environmental protection. Kaya naman ang proyektong ito ay nagsisilbing gabay 
at inspirasyon upang mas lalo pa nating patibayin ang mga pulisiyang ipapatupad at mga programang itataguyod bilang tugon sa ilang dekadang problema natin sa kalinisan. Meanwhile, DENR Assistant Secretary for Legal Affairs Lawyer Michelle Angelica Go looked forward to having such a facility to be the model sanitary landfill in the entire country. We hope that this being a shared conceptualization that the people of Marawi City and Lanao del Sur will take care of the project will ensure that at the end of the day, this sanitary landfill is maintained no? as the best, and I think the biggest sanitary landfill in, in the Philippines. We hope to see this city, this area, as, as the model of sustainable development in the country. So from a war ravage area, this will be a model environmentally sustainable city. For PNA Newsroom, Claire Gigha of the Philippine Information Agency, Lano del Sur. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. No more secrets. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. underscores the importance of a transparency in the country's healthcare system as he vowed to look after the welfare of nurses and a better COVID-19 response. New heads of agencies assume their posts, ensuring continuity of governance services delivery and fulfilling the new administration's vision of a better life for Filipinos. The 2 pesos minimum fare hike and public utility jeepneys takes effect today. We talk to drivers and passengers and hear what they have to say on this development. And a breather welcomes consumers in July as firms cut cooking gas prices amid rising living costs due to unabated fuel price hikes. As Filipinos, we all have a vital role to play in preventing the spread of COVID-19. So remember, wear face masks and face shields. Wash your hands often. Practice safe physical distancing, go out only for essential reasons, and get vaccinated as soon as possible to protect ourselves, our families, and the community. Together, we can beat COVID-19. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, check our webpage or log on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. You may also watch us on PTV4. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. We tell stories that inspire change. I'm Marita Mwahe. Stay safe and have a good day.